What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that grad schools face? It seems daunting and it looks like a lot. Right. It's not actually that hard. We have a lot of students that spin that off into patents, companies. You're also a guaranteed a scholarship of your tuition, so you don't have to worry about paying tuition or whatever. What's the GPA requirements looking like? 3.0 for grad students. In this video, I interview seven of Canada's biggest engineering universities to basically answer the question, what is engineering grad school and how do they differ from university to university? Even as a fifth year mechanical engineering student myself, I was pretty surprised and caught off guard with some of their answers. So I think you'll learn a thing or two in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, I just wanted to ask you like, what engineering university are you from? Okay. I'm from the Sun School of Engineering, York University. Okay, and what is your role there? I'm the manager of graduate studies. What's the difference between jobs or opportunities from like a master's or PhD standpoint versus just like a bachelor's? Well, students do have a higher earning potential with a master's degree, and they also learn to think critically. What do you mean by the, the higher potential? Of, do you mean like salary-based? Salary, yeah, salary-based, absolutely. What are the GPA requirements like to get into the graduate program? It varies on the programs, but it could be anywhere from a B or a B plus. And what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that you guys face in the graduate school? That graduate school is the same as undergraduate studies. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing a research-based master's, it's not. You take less courses, you work with a supervisor, you do hands-on research, and you solve a problem, which culminates into a thesis. What's your best advice for engineering students, maybe undergrads, that want to take on graduate school? Decide on which path you want to take. There are different research-based programs, there are course-based master's programs, and there's course-based with project. So you need to determine where your work life is going to take you, and then you follow your path. What engineering university are you a part of? Uh, Toronto Metropolitan University. Sweet, and what's your role there? I'm the senior manager of graduate engagement and operations. Sweet, and why should students choose your school? Um, TMU, unlike other schools, are very entrepreneur focused, so we have a lot of different zones and uh, incubator clusters. We have about five, six zones, which help our students uh, actually invest into their own like startups themselves. Why do students take on graduate school in, in your university? It mainly depends. If they, if they enjoy research, then you have no choice but to do yeah, a graduate yeah, yeah. degree. For master's programs, course based, a lot of them will like to actually pursue it based on like they may do their bachelor's in mechanical, but they actually enjoy aerospace industry or want to work in aerospace. So they'll diversify them, their education and get a degree in aerospace engineering instead. Okay, sweet. And what do you think is the difference between the jobs and like opportunities from a PhD or master's compared to a bachelor's? Nowadays, it really depends on the industry. Some um, big companies like Twitter, um, Uber actually hire MACs, PhDs, because they do a lot of research uh, involved oh. into their own company and the market, so then they are hiring more researchers in those fields. What are the GPA requirements like for getting into grad school? Um, so a course-based master is generally a B in your last two years of study, and the MAC, the research base, is a B-plus in your last two years. What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that grad schools face? Probably that a grad degree will make you overqualified for positions. So I know when I finished my undergrad degree, I was like, oh, I don't think I want to do a grad degree because then you kind of become overqualified. But if you look at it nowadays, how many undergrad students are finishing a bachelor's degree in engineering? So you're all, you're all competing for the same jobs. So diversify or to make yourself more competitive in the job market, people now do have to get a job, uh, master's degree. 100%, and what's your best advice for engineering students that want to uh, join the graduate world? Uh, I would say don't think of if you're like a mechanical student that you only have to do or only eligible to do a degree in mechanical because of the basis of engineering is similar all around you would look into the grad school based on what you want your career path to be okay first of all which engineering university are you from i'm from university of waterloo okay and what is your role there i'm the graduate studies marketing and recruitment specialist oh sweet marketing okay so why should students join the graduate program so Waterloo has a couple things that are really unique to it. First, I'd say it's our collaborative nature of the programs. So within all of our departments, there's a lot of opportunity to do either coursework or research work with the others. You're not siloed just into one area. We recognize that you'll have interests outside of it. We also have collaborative programs that specifically connect all of our engineering departments, but also other departments in engineering, math, science, 
those types of things. So first, the collaborative nature is one really important aspect. The other is our IP policy. So pretty unique to Waterloo, students and faculty members own 100% of their IP. So the research work that you develop stays with you and your faculty member. We have a lot of students that spin that off into patents, companies, um, information centers. So. I'd say the entrepreneurial nature of Waterloo yeah. also ties into that. So we have, oh, in engineering, we have the Conrad School of Entrepreneurship and Business, which sounds like it wouldn't fit in engineering, but the whole idea behind that is you take your engineering ideas, you take all of those patents, and you can actually spin it into something. So we have PhD fellowships. So an ECE student, let's say they have this IP or they have this idea, they do this fellowship with Conrad where they can take that idea and turn it into a business or a company idea. Oh my so, god, that's so cool. And what do you think is like the difference in like jobs and opportunities from a PhD or master's compared to just a regular bachelor? Yeah, so I would say that first you're coming in with so much more expertise if you have that master's degree or that PhD degree. You've been able to specialize more. Bachelors are amazing. You're going to get this incredible information, but it's still pretty broad. The master's degree allows you to specialize, take it to that next level. And I'd say that's another thing that Waterloo does pretty well. So five out of our six departments actually have MNG co-op programs so you're getting actually work experience while doing your master's degree and it's again giving you that foot in the door at a master's level um, I'd say to our MASC students a lot of them want to get into industry but in R&D or lab work so it's also giving you this extra experience in research that you can take professionally okay wait so it's like a mass like a co-op masters is yeah what so um, Yes, yeah, so you would do a study term, a study term, a work term, and then you can even extend that to another work term and one more study term. So oh gosh, during so cool. the degree, you yeah. get the work experience. And as everyone knows, Waterloo is pretty good with its co-op experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you get to tap into all of those resources to get jobs, to get that experience. And the types of jobs you get as a master's student is generally a bit higher level. Your pay is going to be better. Um, and the work you get to do is really interesting. Okay, cool. And what are the, the GPA requirements looking like for this kind of program? Yeah, so for all of ours, for a master's entrance, it's at least 75% over your whole degree or your last two years. Um, I don't know the exact conversion to U of A, but you can find it on our website. And what is one of the coolest areas of research that you guys do? Oh, okay, so biomedical is a really big one that's happening. So there's a couple different areas. It's one of our collaborative programs. And so I know with that we have, like from chemical engineering, they're taking these like really tiny robots that go into your bloodstream. They go through the body, so it's not taking like a huge incision. So I find that really fascinating research. We have others in BME who are doing um, AI robots for patient interaction. So how do robots work with people in those types of settings? We also have really incredible work around sustainability and environment. Um, so again, looking at chemical, it's taking waste and turning it into resources that are valuable, like materials for wrapping food waste. So yeah. taking waste and turning it into something useful. <laughs> well, you have so much cool stuff to say. We, we really do. Yeah, one of those is a really cool school. What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that the grad world faces? Mm. I think one of the questions that I always get from students is, is it worth it? Why would I even do it? You can get really good jobs right out of bachelors when, especially like I hear it from our Waterloo students all the time, like the very high sought after to go right into work. And so I think it's a misconception that grad isn't worth it. Um, I think it really is, like I said, for that extra experience, but also defining yourself differently. So taking it to the next level and really setting yourself apart. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not worth it. But like the value you can get from that is huge. We hear alumni come back and talk all the time where they've gone into industry and they're like, no, I'm coming back, yeah. getting that extra yeah, degree yeah. and then going back into the workforce. And the way it changes their career tra trajectory is totally different. So your pay grade is higher when you start, but also moving up in a company is much easier when you've got that master's or PhD degree. On, on the final note, what's your best advice? For students interested in grad school? 100%. I would say do the research. Now I've talked so much about grad studies, why I think it's incredible, yeah. but do that research and see if it has that value for you. I'm not going to say it is for absolutely everybody, but I think it has a huge, tremendous value in engineering specifically. So I'd say my best advice, do the research, look at the websites, departments, reach out to the people who are working there. We're happy to talk to you, um, see if this sparks your interest as well. So okay. do the research. What uh, university are you a part of? Um, I'm from McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay, so and what role do you have in the university? So I work in the recruitment office for the Faculty of Engineering. I am the graduate liaison officer. Okay, sweet. And why should students join the graduate program? 
specifically coming to McMaster University has a wealth of benefits like our co-op program for all graduate students. Um, we are fully funded for our research students and just all around it's a really great environment and collaborative university. Sweet. What's the GPA requirements looking like for your program? So it depends on the program that you wanted to go into. I'm seeing a lot of B's, B minus, B plus, yeah. A minus even here too? For, for civil? PhD. Oh, for a PhD. But okay. Yeah, so ahead. What's the job opportunities that you can have with a PhD and master's compared to just like a bachelor's? Job prospects. I think obviously it would give you similar jobs, but like higher paying positions right. kind of thing. So you would agree that it just trends upward? Yeah, exactly. So any further education is nothing but a benefit for you. Sweet. And what is one of the coolest research areas that you guys have? Personally, I really like the nuclear engineering department. We have a nuclear reactor on campus, um, so that's really exciting. I did a tour of it myself, and it was really interesting, so that would be my favorite. Okay, cool. And what is one of the biggest misconceptions that you guys face like in the graduate world, do you think? I think kind of misconceptions that I've kind of heard with like people coming through during this tour um, is that it seems daunting and it looks like a lot right. but when you break it down into bits like it's not actually that hard kind of thing the average from what students have been saying isn't as high as they thought it was going to be um, kind of thing and you need your statement of interest academic CV references if you just break it down it's not that hard Sweet. and what is your best advice that you have for engineering undergrads for engineering undergrads I think my best advice would just be to connect with your professors see different areas of research, different areas of engineering that you think you might be interested in. Um, that way, if you do decide to pursue graduate studies, you're just prepared for that application and for that next step. Okay, first of all, what engineering university are you a part of? The University of British Columbia. Okay, sweet. And why should students join the UBC for a grad program? Because we're awesome, <laughs> but also we have a variety of programs. We have the Master of Engineering, which is our course-based program. So if you're looking for more of an industry-based jumpstart, you can use that. It also has an internship option at the end. It's like a co-op, but it's at the end, so technically not a co-op. We also have the Master of Applied Science program, which is a research-based program where you can do six courses and then a research project that takes about 24 months. And then the PhD program, which is is the master's program, but longer and more intensive research. Okay, sweet. And what's the GPA requirements looking like for uh, this the program? It's a 76% for equivalent for UBC, which is um, a B plus generally at all the other universities. What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that grad schools face? I guess that it's not really useful because it is. <laughs> okay, okay. You can do a lot. With a master's degree, you can get a better paying job. You can also get those fancy schmancy degrees in the government, yeah. or like all those jobs in the government. Right, right, right. And what is your best advice that you would have for students that want to join? If you're thinking of research specifically, my best advice is for everyone to find the research that resonates with them the most and find that and research there and study there. Um, okay, first of all, I see this question out here. Ask me about grad research funding. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you that first. Okay. Tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so grad research funding at U of T depends on whether you're a master's student or a PhD student. Uh, those are the base funding, so that's what you get in your pocket every year. On top of that, you're also a guaranteed a scholarship of your tuition, so you don't have to worry about paying tuition or whatever. So that's, that's the base funding, but it also depends on each department that you're in it can be it can be a lot higher to be honest uh, say if you're in ECE they, they give you a lot because right. <laughs> obviously computer engineering is very hot you find that you need to supplement that some more then there's lots of TA ships that you can do uh, for a very variety of courses and stuff like that. Sweet and what was your role with U of T? Uh, so I'm a PhD student in materials engineering. Okay, so and why did you join? Like, why did you take PhD? Uh, yeah, so I did. I did my undergrad here at U of A, um, and I really liked additive manufacturing, so printing metals, uh, yeah. and so I found that really interesting. And at the time, the job opportunities that I was looking at necessitated having a master's or a PhD, so I decided to go uh, direct to PhD. Um, and, and uh, kind of continue on that path. And what job opportunities were you looking into? Uh, primarily, so aerospace uh, additive manufacturing, so manufacturing components that couldn't be made 
by normal manufacturing techniques such as like CNC milling or stuff like that. Uh, they can benefit from additive manufacturing. I like space. I like additive manufacturing. So I kind of just combined those two and was like, all right, this is this is where I'm kind of <laughs> setting my path now. Yeah. What are you working on right now? Yeah, so I do new alloy design for additive manufacturing. So basically any materials that undergo extreme temperature, wear or corrosion, such as it what's seen in the aerospace industry, I, uh, I try and find something that's better, right? Uh, and I try and play around with different compositions to be able to make that happen. And why did you move from to U of T instead of going on with U of A? Yeah, so I was very intrigued by uh, the professor uh, that I'm under. He was doing a lot of really interesting research at the time in additive manufacturing and so I reached out to him and we kind of you know we, we clicked on a personal level um, and he said yeah let's let's start doing uh, some grad studies here I think it'll be a great addition to the team and basically that's that's where that led. I was wondering in your perspective do you think that there's like a significant difference in the like the salary from a someone that has graduated with like a PhD or a master's compared to the bachelor's? That's tough. That, that's tough. That's a dangerous question, I'll be honest. <laughs> so I can't directly... It depends the industry that you're going in, right? It depends what you want to do. So if you're going into like a really niche industry, such as what I'm going into, I don't think I could have gotten far salary-wise with just a bachelor's. And so master's and PhD kind of opened the door for, uh, for those you know, higher salary opportunities for me. I have my materials engineering bachelor's degree. I could have gone and worked up north in Fort Mac and made right. a lot of money uh, out of the out of the pot, right? So it just really depends on what you like and where you want to go. Whether masters or PhD can actually increase your. Uh, okay, sweet. I wanted to ask you a little bit deep on a deeper level. Okay. What do you th What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that you guys face in the grad school? Misconceptions that you don't really have a life in grad school. So like, if you're thinking about masters and PhD, typically you see in the movies that it's just like an absolute grind all the time. Um, and it's hard. It's like a, any undergrad at uh, at U of A and U of T is, is very hard. Um, and that's that's the same for grad school. Is that it's it's also hard, but you're also supported by a really nice community of your lab mates and your department and your professors. So it's like close knit. Yeah, yeah. It's very close knit, and you know we go for go for beers and food and all that. So it's. Uh, it's not all just like books and right. equations and everything. There, there's a life beyond that, which is nice. Yeah. Sweet. And what was the GPA requirements looking like for you guys? Uh, so I'd say for, for masters, um, let's say uh, 3.2 ish. You should be pretty competitive. And then if you're going to go direct to PhD, probably like you know as closer to 4.0 you can get the, the better. Yeah. Okay. And last question: If you were to restart tomorrow, let's say that you went back to first year, what you would you do differently, or what would you do to position, reposition yourself to get back to where you are now, or even better? I initially wanted to be a mechanical engineer, okay. um, and in my first year, my grades were not so hot, and so I was pushed into materials engineering. And it wasn't what I wanted at the time, to be honest. But uh, then I found something that I really like, which was additive manufacturing, and I've done that done that since then and it's it's my research now so I would say I, I wouldn't change what happened for the world because uh, I don't know where I would be as a mechanical right. engineer right um, so kind of roll with the punches sometimes and uh, yeah, just take life as you. On that note what's your best advice that you would have for students that want to kind of go into the same field? Uh, the, the same field as me? Yeah same or, field or even like a pursue a PhD or master's? Yeah just be curious honestly like uh, if you want to do research, research-based masters or PhD, you really just gotta see weird things happen and kind of be interested in why that happened, right? And so you don't necessarily have to think, okay, my grades aren't great, I can't be a master's or PhD student, it's, it's not, not the case. You just have to be a, a really curious person, curious. I, I'd say, and always wanting to, to look into stuff. And uh, yeah. What university are you from? University of Alberta. And why join the graduate program here? We have a really good graduate community here. Um, we have lots of international students and lots of local students, and I think it's a good mix of different backgrounds. Sweet. And what's the GPA requirements looking like? 3.0 for grad students. What do you think are like the difference in job opportunities from like a PhD or master's compared to a bachelor's? If you go into a master's and graduate, then you're going to have more skills than you've had at the undergraduate level. 
but your skills aren't necessarily more technical skills. You have proven your ability to do independent research, figure things out on your own, and you might have lab work involved, you have more writing involved, so you've kind of proven yourself in a more professional capacity leaving school rather than at the undergraduate level. You've just done your coursework and, and moved on. What's your role at the U of A? I'm a grad student in engineering. Okay, so and what are you working on right now? I'm looking at the degradation of microplastics in environmental waters. Okay, so how has that been so far? I've loved it. Um, yeah, I'm a really big fan of my research. It's hands-on. It's super, super hot topic right now. So I like the idea that I can intersect with academia, but then also just regular people who want to know about like the buzzword. And what's one of your best advice for students that want to maybe take on something similar? Um, I'd say think about what type of project you want to work on and go somewhere that you're interested in, not necessarily where you think you'll get money because the money will come if you're interested. Now that you've learned a little bit about what the engineering graduate program is, you may be wondering what do all of the engineering disciplines even do? Well, if you're interested in that, I made a video. You can click right up here. I think it's up here or right here or right here. Click that link and you can learn a little bit more about all the engineering disciplines, what do they do in university and what do they do in their co-ops or in their work. If you found value in this video, make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.